What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can impress a college coach. So we're going to be talking about three separate examples here, things college coaches look for at the wide receiver position, and what you guys can do to work on those aspects. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to get better at your route running, your press releases, your catching, your balance, all the things that are going to translate to make you a better overall player, check out that very first link in the description below for our four-week wide receiver on-field workout schedule 2.0. So the reason why this 2.0 schedule is a little bit more on the advanced side. So if you guys have already completed our original four-week plan, or if you guys are more advanced wide receiver, this is absolutely for you. So check out that very first link below, fellas, if you're interested. Let's get started with this video. So now, first router is going to be from a uh, college kind of like showcase. I believe this is like an Under Armour showcase. And this is an example of a wide receiver who maybe doesn't necessarily know or maybe on this specific rep doesn't necessarily know how to run against this type of look. So college coaches want to see you um, display your knowledge of route running. You want to have a fo high football IQ. Be know how to attack DBs essentially to create separation because the next level, you know, it, everybody in high school, if you're a good athlete, you're a talented receiver, you have good size, you know, you're going to be able to just run around guys And at the high school level. You'll go up against a DB who's a scrub. You'll be able to just run a fade and just simply run past him. But against talented DBs, DBs who know what they are doing, that is not going to work. So obviously in this scenario, we got a DB who's lined up inside shade. So he's inside shade for a reason. His whole goal is to prevent the inside and force you to the outside. The sideline is like the extra defender on the field. So as a wide receiver, if I just take off and let's say I have a fade route and just go run to the sideline, that doesn't do me any good. That's exactly where this DB wants me to go. So when this wide receiver comes off the line, maybe he gives a little change in tempo slightly, but for the most part, he's just running to the outside. This DB is completely okay with that. He's going to get hands on you. He's going to put his hands right into your hip and do something we call squeeze you to the sideline, which pretty much cuts down space for the quarterback to throw you open. We have to give the QB as much space as possible to throw me a good ball. So what he should have done here in this scenario, because this DB's inside shade, is attack him. Let's go at him. Let's try to threaten him where he doesn't want me to go. So he doesn't want me to go inside. So maybe off the line, instead of just running away, I should have attacked him. I should have attacked his midline. Maybe gave him a head fake inside. Because if I could just get him to hesitate, then I could go hip to hip and actually have some space to the sideline for the QB to throw me open. But if I just run from the slot, right, we're on the hash mark, and I just try to outrun him with speed, a talented DB at the next level will not let that fly. So if I'm a college coach and I'm recruiting a guy, I'm not looking for guys who could just run around dudes on film. I'm looking for guys who know how to set people up with their release and with their route. So I'm going to play this full speed and then we will show a regular example or a good example, I should say, of this exact same scenario with inside shape press and how you guys should be running a fade to give your QB space and not get locked up and forced to that sideline. So now this clip here is from DK Metcalf. So pretty similar um, situation here. We got a DB who's inside shape, obviously, and um, we want to try to work him to the inside because he's inside shape, threaten him to where he doesn't want us to go to give us space to the outside. So let's play this thing full speed. So Metcalf comes off the line, threatens the DB inside, and then he is able to get back up vertical with some space where the QB could fade him out. This is what college coaches want to look for, fellas. They're looking for guys who know how to set up their routes. They know how to run good routes. And I, I think, you know, a lot of people talk a lot about college, college recruiting. Oh, does this guy pass the eye test? Is he fast? I think slowly and slowly, the wide receiver position is starting to get away from that. You know, whether that's because, you know, you see guys dominate in the league who maybe aren't the fastest like Cooper Cup, Hunter Renfro, those guys who all run good routes and they're able to get a lot of receptions, not just based on their speed, but because they run good routes and systems. Like there's a lot more systems in college football nowadays, running that air raid, throwing the ball 50 times a game where it relies on receivers being able to win one-on-one -on -one matchups and being able to get open. So knowing how to run good routes is how you can do that and how you can separate yourself from maybe that guy who just runs a 4-3-40, but that's all he has. So Metcalf does a great job. Comes out, attacks the DB's midline, and then now he gives that fake to the inside, threatening like he's going to be running a slant. Hips and shoulders sell. He's got a head fake. He's actually stepping into the frame of the DB. All three of those things is what will get this guy to move. Now, as a wide receiver, you could still screw it up even with attacking him. You could try to take off and run away from him after the release. You have to get right back up vertical. I call it getting skinny. 
I also call it going hip to hip with him. You move him off that platform, I want to get hip to hip with him. I want to stay tight and I want to try to stack over the top or at least give myself as much space to the sideline as physically possible. And that's what Metcalf does. Now, Another thing that's going to help you with this, another thing that another detail that college coaches might look for is after that release, let's not look back for the ball right away. Let's keep that head down. Let's pump those arms. Let's actually get skinny, but let's also widen the distance from this DB. I got separation, but let's keep separation by actually accelerating up and winning this ball over the top. That is textbook right there for Metcalf on that fade route. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job attacking the leverage, threatening him to the inside, and creating space for him back to the outside to operate. All right, so now next clip I want to talk about here is anytime that you guys are in a one-on-one -on -one setting, you know, like, so for example, like everybody is probably about the last couple months was kind of that whole, you know, college camp season, right? Everybody's going to different camps. Everybody's trying to get in front of as many colleges as possible. You know, I don't think necessarily that's the best you know, ideas sometimes, but sometimes if you're getting recruited by a lot of schools, it's great to get out in front of them. I, I think some guys waste a lot of money um, traveling across the country, going to a bunch of different camps for colleges that um, have no idea who they are and you're not on their radar, right? I think college camps are great, but you got to be able to go to schools that uh, actually know who you are and are actually looking at you. Like there's a camp down here in California, for example. It's um, a Fresno State one. And, you know, it's great Fresno State or not Fresno State, excuse me, Redlands, but Fresno State will come out to the camp camps like or colleges like Yale, Harvard, they all attend, right? It's one of those mega camps. And there's like 300 kids there and you're only there for two hours, right? So those colleges can't evaluate 300 players in two hours. They just can't do it. So they know who their guys are going into it. So when they know who you guys are, they're obviously going to be keeping an eye out for you. And every single rep matters because you don't get that many. So on your routes, when you're doing these one-on-ones, because that's how they evaluate talent, they evaluate to see if you could get off a of press, make plays, you have to keep it realistic to impress a college coach. Can you get open in a realistic setting against, a, against an actual DB who's talented? So let's play this thing full speed. So this wide receiver does a great job taking inside release. He's running a post. And he does a very, very good job at getting skinny and making this a game realistic route okay so now so many times in one-on-ones and i see it we see it time and time again what wide receivers will do is that they'll run a route like a post like a dig like a curl maybe not a curl but a post or a dig is usually the most popular one and they'll catch that ball like look they're like almost on the top of the numbers they'll catch the ball on like the opposite hash now when you do that in no world are you catching a dig or a post if you're a front side read on the opposite hash. Maybe if you're backside, don't get me wrong. But is the quarterback probably going to have time to go from first read to second read to third read and hit you all the way across the field against man coverage? Probably not. Usually not, unless it's like maybe a two man situation. So you have to keep your routes realistic. You got to treat everything when it's one on ones like you're a first read, you're catching the ball right away. Quarterback doesn't have that much time. Let's get up into the route. So what a lot of wide receivers would do in this case is they would work this DB off the ball. They'd get him to go to the outside, take the inside release, but they would just keep running. They would think, all right, I got the inside release. I'm just going to keep running. And they'd round it off, run the post. Quarterback would end up having to throw it way on the other side of the field. If it's cover one, if it's maybe two man, you're locked up. You, you, can't, you can't catch that ball on the other side of the field. And in a real game, there are other routes. You could screw up the entire spacing of the play and pull a defender into another route that we were trying to get out of the play. So you have to make sure we keep things realistic. College coaches want to see you get open in a realistic fashion. So that's what this wide receiver does. He stays low at this pad level. He's dipping that shoulder. He's getting back up into this DB's cushion because now he's back on that line. When he breaks on that post, he'll catch that thing before the this hash, not on the opposite hash because he rounded this break off, cut the route short, or forced the release inside. Fellas, you have to make your routes realistic. You have to make it game realistic. If you wouldn't run the route in a game or you wouldn't do that technique in a game, why are you doing it when it's one-on-ones or when it's practice? You have to keep things realistic if you want to stand out, actually stand out to a college coach. I can tell you this right now. A college coach does not care how many receptions you get in one-on-ones. Obviously, it matters. Let me finish what I'm going to say. Obviously, it matters receptions, but he doesn't care if you're catching a ball and you ran a triple move. He's going to think, man, that's not going to work. I, I like that's, that's not realistic. I'm not going to evaluate that rep. 
It's, it's just like if you throw the ball and you get absolutely locked up, DB bats it down, and then like maybe it bounces off his foot and you end up catching it. Like He's not going to think that that's a good play by you. Maybe it's good concentration, but it's got to be realistic. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Again, really solid job here by this wide receiver getting skinny and making this route realistic so it's not one of those one-on-one -on -one routes we all love to criticize. All right, so now last thing I want to talk about here is this route from Devontae Adams, and I just want to talk about the details right so colleges college coaches again they're very big on the details so am i very big on the details the little intricacies of the position that help you guys get open and i think that i want to include this clip just because i want to show you guys that you know when you're running routes the details absolutely matter because the details translate so when you have a situation like you're running drill work right and you're working out you know whether you're running routes versus air you're doing drills running through cone drills you have to try to emphasize so many little details so it translates to this right I, 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 people always will hate on some of the videos that we post because they're like, oh, no way a receiver's thinking about all this during a game. It's like, yeah, I never said they were. It's stuff that you guys need to emphasize while you're training, while you're working out, while you're doing drill work. So in a game, we can play fast. You think about the details while you're training. So in a game, you can play fast. So we look at this rider from Devontae Adams. This is one of those details that I think is so, so important to get out of breaks fast, to accelerate out of breaks. And you see how when he makes this speed come but that toe is turned slightly towards where he wants to break. It's not a ton. He's not putting a ton of pressure on his knee or anything like that. He's not turning it towards the sideline, but slightly turned. So when he makes that cut, he could actually drive off of that foot and push off of that arch and get some explosion. His first step out of the break is actually out of the break. It's not a step that's in place. He doesn't take these choppy steps. So fellas, those minor details, whether it comes to press releases, whether it comes to cuts at the top of the route, those details matter. And those details is what will get you open against a talented DB. Because this DB he's going up against right now, this is Jair Alexander, probably one of the best DBs in the game, right? So if he's coming off and he's running this route, and let's say Adams makes this cut, but it's like his toes are forward, he's reaching with the cut, and he sticks, and then this second step is here, he takes another third step, and he's not going anywhere. He's not driving out of the break. That gives that DB time to recover. So those little details that you might not think matter that much are details you need to emphasize while you are training. Whether it's your foot placement on a press release, whether it's your hand placement on a catch, you need to rep the details. The little things are not little. So when we actually go run routes in front of a college coach, we don't have to think about it. We don't have to think about these little things. We could actually just go execute, play fast, run hard, and get in and out of my route. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by Adams setting him up on this dive release and then not having any wasted motion at the top of the break because of his foot placement and that minor detail. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If uh, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to uh, leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback, you guys. It's always great to hear from you. And again, fellas, if you would like a four-week wide receiver on-field daily training schedule, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.